partial things. We've got a few things to cover this week. There's obviously a bit of news that happened this week that is kind of just a dark looming cloud over everything. So instead we're going to talk about something that's a lot less depressing, even though it's kind of just stupid as fuck, well, but it's Storm the Stormy Daniels a fair thing. Yeah, so there's been some updates around the Stormy Daniels uh, that is a porn star who uh, Donald Trump had sex with during the time that he was married to Melania, but I don't know what, they don't know exactly what year it was or something. It was 2011. Oh, 2011. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it was like right after No, 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 Trump's... 2006. Shit. After, after Barron was born. yeah. That's what it was. Um, so, also, there was a charge um, from a, I forget what group it was, but like a nonprofit group alleging that. Uh, well, so there was a payment to Stormy Daniels and um, what do you call it? The agreement? She's a non disclosure. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, she was just saying that. That Stormy is not allowed to talk about the shit, but the, but Trump's lawyer broke broke the agreement by talk by basically saying he paid Stormy instead of Trump paying Stormy to cover Trump's ass because there was some nonprofit that was basically saying that he that they use campaign funds to do the shit. Yeah, so they were saying like it was a ca- a can- illegal like campaign finance move, and so to kind of side skirt that Trump's lawyer who's been like his longtime lawyer just took the heat on it and said that he paid Stormy Daniels $130,000 of his own money which is just kind of funny like because yeah it solves the Trump problem of the campaign finance uh, violation but like it makes no sense why Trump's lawyer would just it, it, <coughs> pay makes, a porn star that's randomly why. $130,000. Like, that's why it's so legally they can't get in any trouble. And it doesn't trace back to Trump. I'm, I kind of believe that he, he did pay it out of his own money and Trump paid him somehow. Yeah, but I mean, I'm just saying it does nothing to like refute the story. Yeah, or they, don't, like... they don't care about that. <laughs> they don't care. That's People forget. Shit, I don't even remember what happened this week. Yeah, no, it is kind of funny because it, I don't know, it really doesn't seem like, I I don't know, I would think, you know, like, this is the stuff the evangelical vote cares about, but, like, they always kind of, yeah, like, latch onto this, like, petty personal life stuff, but it doesn't seem to affect Trump. I mean, I think you're right that <laughs> Trump is good legally on this one. That's kind of all that matters, apparently. Well, he well, there was a new other fucking affair that came out. I think yesterday, the New Yorker printed like a beautiful. I fucking love the New Yorker's website. <laughs> I want to see this. It makes it makes the shit look so like they do it so nicely. They're talking about basically it's about to be smart, but they present it so well that you're fucking intrigued. Basically, Trump had an affair with another person. He taped uh, a, a, a he taped an episode of The Apprentice at the Playboy Mansion, and he went through a pool party, and he actually slept with one of the like Playboy bunnies. And her name was Karen McDougal. McDougal, <laughs> a, a playmate <laughs> from the nineties. <laughs> like, yeah. he has a type. A specific kind of type, and it's like pe- people that that people that he knows that he can kind of coerce easily into sex, like the porn star. She already, she already fucks for money. Fucks no, not fucks for money, but she's like her, her job is fucking. So yeah, but and the playmate. Like, you could you can basically like sexually harass them enough and it was eventually given because that was how that shit was back then. So McDougal was also paid a hundred and fifty thousand during the twenty sixteen presidential campaign. Wow. But yeah, but no not by Trump. It was by the National Enquirer. They just never run ran it. Wait, why would she be paid by a newspaper? To get the scoop. 
it was before the election, yeah. My time's kind of actually shady, to be honest. Not they, they found out that she fucked Donald Trump too, and they're like, shit, tell they're us like, about we'll it. We'll give you 150 grand. Yeah, that's a, that's a bit low though. Tell us Especially the details. when the person is like right on, like, the person's about to be president or he's about to, the vote is coming up. Like, pe- people would have paid a million for the fucking grabbing by the pussy and, and like, first story. So why wouldn't they pay like 500,000 for this? She got che- she, she, she was cheated. She was straight up cheated. <clears throat> she got to advocate for herself, man. They got to pay her more next time. Well, so what? What is up with this one, though? I, is it just they bombed and then yeah, yeah. moved on, and nobody yeah. was paid off or anything like that? Just... No, she got money. Yeah, she she got money, so she she was cool. But basically, they're just establishing, a, like a a chain of affairs. So it's just it's just this thing. But it makes sense. That's why I thought he did it anyway. So yeah, that's what we all just assumed happened. Yeah, exactly. But hmm, I don't know. It's just complicated because it's like, yeah, it is just. Okay, it's like the fucking people that elected him, though, are, were like, they, it was like they knew it was true, but they were the ones just, like, playing themselves. They're just like, oh, you know, he's a good guy, like, I don't know, it's just so confusing. Some people believe it, some people just want him to do one thing, like, one thing that he promised them, so they're willing to overlook the other shit. But some people actually believe that shit, which is crazy. Those people are... Israeli police are recommending the indictment of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu um, for bribery, but honestly, it's just like this whole list of things. There are three cases against him. Yeah, so that he accepted gifts from wealthy businessmen. Um, uh, what is this one? He is said to have sent cigars and champagne. He so he got, basically he got shit. Yeah, he just got a lot of stuff from a lot of like rich connected people yeah and then he also like kind of advocate for these people and like back them up on certain like political things or like business deals and stuff yeah. like that and so it's the same thing politicians do here it's just a higher level yeah yeah and i mean some of it, it like i said it's just a bunch of stuff so you're probably just better off reading through it but like some of the stuff does seem like pretty questionable but again like not out of the realm of politics if you just are actually honest with yourself yeah. but um that's basically what his defense is so he's going on saying that this was just all gifts. yeah they were all just gifts and like it was just regular old business and politics and that he's had personal tax against him his whole political career this is no different he's confident he's gonna get through him but on the other hand um he do have an actual and a record of a bunch of stuff. Police making a recommendation for indictment. It's going to go to Israel's attorney general, um, and then they're going to side. But apparently, yeah, the attorney general is like a longtime homeboy of Netanyahu's. So I could honestly see it just going nowhere after this, yeah, but. Probably. I don't know. I think it's just... I think it's interesting to talk about because it's just, like... First of all, what it could mean if it did happen. Like, it would just be a dramatic change. It could change, like, the... A lot of things. U.S. relations, uh, the settlements, the whole, like, Palestine-Israel conflict. Um, But it all depends on, you know, the fallout of it and how things shape up. But, uh... I don't know, I think it also just kind of sets an interesting precedent in this time. Um, I mean, I think comparing it to the U.S., just seeing an actual indictment come out of, you know, the prime minister or president. Um, I don't know. It just seems interesting that, like, there's also this ongoing investigation with Trump and there's, like, this possibility of him getting an indictment. But it's the same thing where it's going to come down to the attorney general and 
you know, in the U.S. case, we've got Jeff Sessions on the job, but... But he recused himself, but still, Trump can just... Yeah, well, Rod Rosenstein, I guess, but also, yeah, whoever Trump decides to just replace him with at any time, basically, because he could do that, too, so... Um, well, talking about indictment, Lula just indicted 13 Russians over 2016 election medley. Yeah, but it's, it's pretty much just a basic story. He, like, everybody knows there was meddling. He'd been saying that for a minute. <coughs> and now, now um, America is actually trying to get them extradited. But Russia is not going to do that because they're already saying like, it's bullshit. The only, the only way they can get them to extradite these people to the U.S. is if they fuck up and travel somewhere, which decides to maybe just honor the partnership between their country and the U.S. and extradite this person. And even then, they can just choose not to. So, pretty much, I don't think anything is going to happen. Yeah. Um, also, a quote from Rod Rosenstein is, the defendants allegedly conducted what they called information warfare against the United States with the stated goal of spreading distrust towards the candidates and the political system in general. And so that is essentially what they're being charged with, uh, conspiracy to defraud the United States. Um, which, yeah, is pointed out, what does this really mean? Um, yeah, but it was it's, they're basically indicting people from this the Russian organization called Internet Research Agency, which is just just a blatant way of saying troll, basically a troll agency or like just infiltration agency. Because what the fuck are they researching on the internet? And these a whole big ass agency. But I guess they're good at what they do. They've, they've infiltrated Facebook so many fucking times. So much so that the, the Unilever is trying to pull out because of all the bullshit that's still going down on Facebook. They're pulling out. Of, they're trying to pull out of everywhere, and if and Unilever has like five billion, so basically people are losing money because of these rushes. Right? I don't know. I feel like that's kind of just a. How can you just pull out all your online? I feel like that's just yeah, bullshit. Like, yeah, they, no, they can. Cause but and then just, do what? They're just gonna get billboards and shit <laughs> like. <laughs> newspaper ads no, sure people. okay like you can't Go pull out it. of the internet yeah that's what i'm saying like they're like we're gonna pull out of the internet if you guys don't clean up your act it's like good luck with that like you just done advertising then okay yeah. or just like you're gonna do tv and yeah billboards or something How people like, good to actually see that shit it's the internet you need to be on the internet yeah but I don't know. And it just gets annoying. Like, everybody attacks YouTube. But, I don't know. YouTube is actually kind of doing a shitty job. And... I would do it. They're trying. <laughs> they're trying, but... I don't know. They're just trying in the wrong way too, too many times. Like... It's also machine learning. There's a lot of that. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's actually most of the problem. Is like, yeah. they just rely too much on machine learning. Nah, but, but that's again, the only like, way it's gonna yeah, work. Yeah, there's like... Anyway, to get back to the fucking um, Russian thing. So, earlier this month, uh, the Russian department or Russian foreign ministry uh, made a statement warning Russians not to travel abroad. <laughs> oh, okay. Because um, because the U.S. people are just gonna arrest you. They're just gonna they're just gonna get you and extradite you. So they're basically saying, yeah. like if if they extradite these people, it's not cause they did this shit and they got indicted. It's because they fucking they fucking hate Russians and they're just basically scooping up Russians. Like we just scooping them up and throwing them in jail. Cause yeah, that's what the U.S. Is. That's wild. Yeah, this is actually a quote from it. It says, Despite our calls to improve cooperation between the relevant U.S. and Russian authorities, U.S. special services have effectively continued hunting for Russians around the world. Considering these circumstances, we strongly insist that Russian citizens carefully weigh up all the risks when traveling abroad. So, yeah, and it also talked about... Uh, a case, a couple cases of um, Russians that have been indicted over the p past several years and described one of them as like a Russian being kidnapped in Spain. 
and that is um I don't know how to say this guy's name, but uh Stan Stanislav Stanislav Lislo. Lissov, I butchered that shit. Uh, yeah, he, fuck it, try it. <laughs> Stanislav Lissov, something like that. Anyway, um, so he was, yeah, arrested for, uh, what do they call it? Oh, he was a suspect of involvement with embezzlement from a bank account by means of a malicious program. And so, yeah, Russia's kind of saying, like, oh, this is, there's no proof or whatever. It's kind of what Russia always seems to say, but, um, and he's, the last article I found on here was from, uh, oh, it's like a year ago, but, uh, he was being extradited, but I, that's weird, I haven't heard anything else about it, but, yeah, apparently Spain is extraditing him. They probably talk about it a lot in Russia. Yeah, we need to watch more RT, I guess. <laughs> Fuck that. All right, well, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Peace. Bye.